Hey everyone, welcome in to another daily editorial here on the KE Report. I'm introducing a new exploration company to all of you. The company is called Kraken Energy, traded on the CSE under the symbol UUSA, on the OTCQB under the symbol UUSAF, and on the Frankfurt Exchange under the symbol F2C. I am chatting with the CEO, Matt Schwab. Now, Kraken Energy focused in the U.S. Company has four projects in Nevada and Utah. Matt, before we get into these individual projects, let's go high level. The company's strategy, being in the U.S., exploring for uranium. Take us through what the big picture is here. Thanks for the intro, Corey. It's great to chat with you again. So, yeah, my name is Matthew Schwab, President and CEO of Kraken Energy. Kraken Energy is a pretty new company uh, as far as exploration groups go out there. Our strategy is really to build up a hub-and-spoke mining model in the United States for strategic goal of becoming a domestic uranium producer. Right now, we do have four high-grade assets, three in Nevada, one in Utah, and we're really focused on, on capitalizing on the growing demand for uranium worldwide, but especially the growing deficit in the United States, which a lot of people don't understand how drastic that actually is. All right, let's talk about some of the projects. Then let's start off with the Apex Uranium Mine. This is in Nevada. Now, I know that you've been in kind of a long permitting process here. This project has a historic resource. Bring us through kind of the history around this Apex Uranium Mine, please. Absolutely. So Apex is the original flagship of Kraken Energy. This was the first project brought on. It goes back way to the 1950s when the AEC, or the Atomic Energy Commission, was offering incentives for domestic uranium production in the U.S. It actually started off its life in the 30s as a silver mine and then switched over to uranium production in the 50s. But when those incentives were taken away at the end of the 1950s, the project was essentially abandoned overnight with a non-compliant resource still in place with advanced infrastructure across the property. It was very small scale, but we've expanded the property now to over 6,000 hectares. And we do have 17 and a half kilometers of strike length on the property with confirmed uranium mineralization across that 17 and a half kilometer stretch. So, yes, it has been a drawn out uh, permitting process with the U.S. Forest Service, which is uh, the largest portion of the property. Some of it is BLM. But we do finally have line of sight on having that drilling permit in hand uh, moving forward uh, through Q2 of this year. I just chatted with the U.S. Forest Service at the end of last week. Things are looking really good. And we do anticipate being able to start drilling uh, by mid-July uh, or at the latest early August. There's a lot of potential on this property, as I said. You know, we've got that 17 and a half kilometer strike length. We've got surface samples up to 6% U308, which is fantastic no matter where you are. Um, and we're really looking forward to exploring the, the potential, the upside on this one, because about 95% of that mineralized trend is untested by drilling. So when, let's say, you do get the permits in place, what would the attack strategy be here in terms of the historic resource and then potential exploration growth? So initially, the the immediate focus will be to kick off drilling around the original Apex mine, uh, to do some infill drilling, confirm the results that were uh, reported historically, and bring that resource, that non-compliant resource, into a more compliant state. Once we have that, we're going to use that as the baseline for advanced exploration across the rest of the property. Okay, let's move over then to the Hearts Point project. This is in Utah. You just kicked off drilling in March. You're drilling up to 1,500 meters. Take us through a bit of a background on this Hearts Point project. So Hearts Point is pretty interesting. It was generated through kind of a non-conventional approach to uranium exploration. The way we came across this was analyzing oil and gas wells uh, through the state of Utah and looking for uh, radiometric kicks in the historic oil and gas well logs. Uh, What we came across on this property through our joint venture partner, Atomic Minerals, was that we had three historic oil wells on the property that intersected the Shinley Formation at depth and had off-scale radioactivity through that formation. Now, the reason the Shinley Formation is interesting to us is because 30 kilometers to the east, the Lisbon Valley Anticline and the Lisbon Valley Mining System produced 80 million pounds of uranium at an average grade of 0.3%, all the way up until 1989 in that Shinley Formation. Just to the west of our property, another 300,000 pounds was produced, also at an average grade of 0.3%. So seeing that we're sandwiched in between them, and Hearts Point is a direct geological analog to the system at Lisbon Valley, we're very excited by those historic oil wells and gave us reasoning to jump on the property and kick off a maiden drilling program. Uh, As you just stated, we kicked off drilling uh, very shortly, uh, very recently. 
And we actually wrapped up a few days ago. Uh, we're demobilizing from the property right now. So we did just drill those initial two drill holes on the property to confirm what we saw in those historic oil wells. Uh, without disclosing too much that I shouldn't, uh, we'll be putting out a press release next week. Suffice it to say, I'm very happy to be putting out that release next week. Now, with all the other action going on around this Hearts Point project, how did you bring this project into the company? Any uh, major stages of payments that we need to be aware of? So the first initial stage of payment is that we have to spend one and a half million dollars over the first 12 months of the agreement. Because of the permitting delays that we uh, we didn't foresee uh, in, through the end of 2023, we actually extended that term. So we only started that payment period uh, when we kicked off drilling here uh, a few weeks ago. So we're in good shape to make sure that those payments are made uh, in the next 12 months. And uh, like I said, the option agreement is with Atomic Minerals. Uh, they've got multiple properties through, uh, through Utah and Colorado that kind of fit the same uh, methodology. And we're really looking forward to building out kind of a new model for that area. In terms of maybe follow-up work, I know we don't even have the results from the current program, but throughout the rest of this year, what would you hope to do here? Well, like I said, we kicked off that main drilling program. Um, we've completed it right now. Uh, I think, uh, you know, before jumping the gun, just confirming your any mineralization on the property will be a huge step forward for the project. Uh, as a little bit of a historical background, the discovery at Lisbon Valley uh, was actually spread over a, a distance of about a kilometer and a half. Uh, they drilled seven drill holes, and only three of those actually hit uranium over a kilometer and a half. So if we can confirm uranium mineralization over that five-kilometer strike length we're looking at right now, uh, I think that's a, a great success moving forward. And if that's the case, then we look forward to planning a, another drill program later this year. All right, let's talk about Garfield Hills, this project in Nevada. What is a bit of a background here. Do you plan on even drilling this project this year? So Garfield Hills is, uh, again, one of our Nevada-based properties uh, just east of Hawthorne, Nevada. It is also a historic producer back from the late 1950s. Uh, we came across this property in some historic literature because we actually saw that uh, ore was coming from this property and being mixed with the ore from Apex and then sent off for further refining from there. So we did wrap up our main drilling program on Garfield Hills in March of 2023. We saw some very encouraging results with continuous mineralization over intervals up to 12 and a half meters. Most of that starting near or at surface. I think we hit on nine of our initial 11 drill holes. Uh, beyond that, we did some further ground prospecting, uh, some more uh, geological work on surface, and we ended up coming up with soil samples over 1% U308, which is a very exciting thing. I've never seen that on any of the uranium properties I've worked on in my career so far. So with all of what we're seeing now, we currently have a confirmed 4.5 kilometer strike length of mineralization on surface on the property, ranging anywhere from 0.164 to 1.007% U308. So a lot of potential there. Uh, we are looking to put in place a phase two drilling program later this year based on financial uh, positioning. So we're very excited about that one. But uh, of course, the immediate uh, priorities of the company are Hearts Point and Apex. Okay, quick comment then on the fourth project, Huber Hills in Nevada. You told me that this is Elko Country's largest uranium pass producer. You going to be doing anything at Huber Hills? Uh, certainly, yeah. We're going to move forward with all four of our projects as best as we can through 2024. It is an earlier stage project. Uh, as you said, it does encompass the historic racetrack open pit mine, which produced at an average grade of 0.24%. Uh, more recently, last summer, we got some samples off the property that were up to 0.236%. Some historic trench samples came off in 2007, up to 0.149% U308. So a lot of potential there as well. It is our smallest property, a little over 300 hectares right now. So we want to get out there this year, fly our baseline radiometric and magnetic surveys, wrap our minds around the geology of the property, and then, again, based on financial situation, potentially plan a phase one drilling program later this year. Okay, let's talk about some of the other company fundamentals, and let's start off with cash. Cash in the bank to move forward with your exploration plans this year. What can you tell us? Uh, so before we kicked off drilling at uh, Hearts Point, we had a little under $3 million in the Treasury. We haven't paid those bills from drilling yet, but I expect we'll be still, sitting still over $2 million in the Treasury as we move forward. Uh, right now, market cap of the company is floating around 7 to $8 million. Very clean share structure, though. I think we've only got $58 million uh, and change shares outstanding right now. No warrants in the structure whatsoever. And I think about 22% of the company right now is held by management and insiders. 
So Matt, make more sense of this. So then the company has, yeah, two, let's say $2 million market cap of seven to $8 million and four projects and in a sector that has been much more popular. What do you think moves the needle here for investors to revalue this Kraken company broadly? Well, you know, uh, before I came on with the company, the focus of Kraken Energy was Apex, plain and simple. So a lot of the original shareholders of the company are really still waiting for some news coming from Apex. So I think that will, uh, once we get out there and we kick off drilling this summer, that will really drive interest and get, and get people re-engaged in the company and the story. Uh, but besides that, you know, with the four properties that we have, we really just have to keep moving forward and progressing. Um, there were some gaps in news flow last year, which uh, definitely took their toll on, on our, our share price. But uh, I think we're really well positioned to bounce back from that and, and really capitalize on 2024. All right. So then I guess just a quick little overview, a recap, news flow. What should investors expect that are watching Kraken? Well, like I said, uh, I, I'm really excited to put out the news from Hearts Point. Um, if you see some confirmation of uranium results on that property, I think that's a big step forward. But then moving into Apex, uh, that's going to be the, the big driver for 2024, I think, as we move forward and really get some, some solid uranium values coming off that property, build up that non-compliant resource, and then use that as a baseline moving forward. All right, Matt, thank you very much for this introduction. I'll post a link to the Kraken Energy website where you all can find out a bit more about the company, read over that company presentation, and please email me with any questions or follow-up topics that you want me to discuss with Matt. So when I do follow up on the back of some of this near-term news, I can get those addressed for you. Matt, thank you very much for this company introduction. Please keep me up to date on future news. Thanks for having me, Corey. It was a pleasure.